can't trust it in one state. Like when you see a collapse of civilization and the emergence of totalitarianism, there is always something about it of the hatred of childhood. That is something that our present sexually obsessed culture, which cannot bear to be in the presence of childhood innocence, and will always seek to destroy that innocence. All children have a period of time called the latency, when they are not aware of human sexuality. They are entitled to have that time. They are entitled to enjoy that time in freedom, without interference from adults whose motivation is at best misguided and at worst very suspect and very sinister. In my opinion, the present drive by the government to prematurely sexualize children, to introduce them to the concepts of radical sexual activity, to clearly separate them from the natural purpose of human sexuality, can only end in one place, and that is the acceptance of greater and more extreme forms of sexual perversion, including sexuality with children and even including pedophilia. We cannot let that happen to our kids. I have no idea whether the members of the government who promote drag queen story time and sexually pornographic school books have pedophile tendencies or pedophile sympathies, but I have no doubt that what they are doing will inevitably end up in a greater societal acceptance of pedophilia. Do not for a moment believe that this is a far-fetched idea as it seems. Who would have thought even two years ago that government ministers would be in tears demanding the right of transvestites to parade their wares in front of children in public libraries. And it must be asked whether this is in any way different from grooming children for sexual precociousness with adults. It seems very difficult to understand why this is such an important matter for all of the parties within the present government and why persistently adults and concerned parents are being excluded. That our system of education would involve children being exposed to highly pornographic material, which even RTE would not permit to be broadcast on the airwaves in case of sisters would be embarrassed. And I can tell you if RTE finds it offensive, that is saying something. Hello, hi. The promotion of pedophilia is perhaps the last taboo of any degenerating society. Even what we have accepted over the past five to ten years, we can have no doubt. This is next up on the agenda of the sexual left. I would appeal to people, if you cannot come out to protect and fight to protect your own interests, if you stood by when they attacked your freedom of movement, if you stood by when they attacked your bank accounts, or they persistently lied to you over the errors about crisis after crisis, which are entirely fictional, if these do not steer you into rebellion, then at least come out and fight for your children! Tyrants, if these monsters get their clutches into your children, they will destroy them and make their lives a misery and a living hell. We cannot let them do that to our children. I'm not particularly interested in what sexually perverse people get up to among themselves, so I would advise them to have a care because sexual corruption is a very destructive force. But I would tell them, keep your hands off our children. For the sexual left, and increasingly that has come to mean all of our political parties, the mere acceptance of, acceptance of perversion is never enough. Acceptance quickly moves to celebration. Celebration quickly moves to participation. Participation soon becomes mandatory, and that is what I believe they have in mind for our kids. Those who do not participate will come to be seen as outcasts, as outliers. There is no depth of sexual perversion in which the sexual little left will not come. There is no level of disgusting activity which they will not force upon society and the demand that it be fully accepted as part of the normal human condition, which it is not. If you doubt what I say, look to the past. History has shown within many of the classical pagan cultures that sexual perversion was celebrated and worshipped in a very similar manner to what is happening in Ireland today. Do not be under any illusion as to what will come our way if we do not stop it. Our government has been fully captured by activists who have a grim and terrible future lined up for us and for our kids. Why do you think 
that the Minister for Children in this country is almost always a practicing homosexual. Send them home! What do you think are the chances of that in our enforcement events? Why is it that this government, for some reason or other, believes that homosexual persons are more appropriate persons to understand and look after the interests of our children than heterosexuals, than couples, or God forbid, than fathers? Does that not seem a little bit counterintuitive? Not only are radical government in Catherine's opponent practicing homosexuals, but they are radical homosexual activists. They come from a tradition that has a contempt for heteronormativity and which is intent on pushing a radical sexual agenda on the children of the committed to their tender persons. Why do you think we have a children to be used to protect the family? Or why is so much intense in the being of family matters? For this reason, the sexual and personal health education in our schools have been introduced with the intent of familiarizing parents and children with the concepts of pornography and extreme sexual behavior. This can only result in sexual confusion among children and in confusion about their sexual identities. School is no place for the state to intervene in the early lives of our children with a view to corrupting them. This is perhaps the most serious crime in the present government is engaged Schools are places for education. They're not places for sexual propaganda. Patrice has mentioned the recent report that we got to two families within their care and subjected to grooming and sexual attacks. In addition, two slip guidelines for the rapidly now advocate invasive questioning of young children in regard to what they see as their sexual identity. This is a very difficult thing for young children to engage in, and this process is highly inappropriate. The recently released film, Sound of Freedom, has highlighted the extent to which child trafficking for sexual purposes is taking place on a worldwide basis. I have heard reports of obvious incidents of child trafficking going through Dublin Airport, which is not capable of dealing with these issues, and whereby people without papers are waved through without proper examination, frequently with children in their custody. Is that perhaps the reason why the government is so intent on not having proper immigration policy whereby proposed migrants can be properly vetted. We must protect our children from this horrible industry of sexual trafficking, and we must call those responsible for it to account. Finally, I would say that the overt attack against childhood and against children may well be the straw that finally breaks the camel's back when it comes to awakening of the anger of the Irish people. When the anger of the nannies of Ireland is finally awoken, I would not like to be in the shoes of our mainstream politicians, I can tell you. We must not allow them to get away with it. And I will appeal to you to support the Irish Green Party in our efforts to bring this to a halt. Any society which will not protect its children will face a terrible and a grim reckoning. We cannot and we will not let that happen. Thank you very much.